The Cloud Act stands for the Clarifying Lawful Overseas Use of Data Act. And it addresses two key challenges. Uh, one being the impediments faced by U.S. law enforcement agencies when trying to gain access to data stored by U.S. companies overseas. And similarly, difficulties faced by foreign law enforcement agencies relating to data stored in the United States. The context and background in which the act was created is important. We need to understand what was happening in the world at the time of its creation. Given the international scale of crime, and particularly cybercrime these days, and the importance of electronic data in trying to uh, remedy those transgressions, uh, as well as the importance of privacy to individuals whose data may be stored overseas, um, the act was created to, to address all of those things. Technologically speaking, uh, back in the day when uh, electronic communications and electronic data storage uh, first came into being, companies would enter into what are called co-location agreements where they would rent server storage space in a particular location in the United States and all the data was there. But given the advent of cloud computing and the fact that there are hundreds of data centers throughout the world located in innumerable countries, um, it's become more difficult to deal with extraterritorial laws and access to that data. Very particularly, the Cloud Act addresses a particular case that was winding its way through the Supreme Court, which is the United States v. Microsoft case, where Microsoft was served a subpoena by U.S. law enforcement agencies dealing with data that was stored in Ireland. And so that case dealt with whether a United States provider of email services must comply with a subpoena and make disclosure in the United States of communications that are within its control but stored overseas. The Cloud Act rendered that case moot, and the Supreme Court uh, said as much when the act was passed. Given the passage of the Cloud Act, it is now clear that the U.S. government can access through a Stored Communications Act warrant or subpoena certain data located in other countries. Interestingly, the Act also encourages executive agreements between the President of the United States and certain qualifying foreign governments. Those are governments that are certified by the U.S. Attorney General as having met certain human rights standards. And these agreements will directly address how to deal with data held in the United States by technology companies and also data stored overseas that is controlled by these same companies. So there are certain risks that um, foreign companies face when they hire U.S. companies that store data in the foreign countries. Um, one of those risks is the possibility that they might have to provide notice to their own subscribers that they might be served with a warrant or subpoena by U.S. enforcement agencies um, that could subject their data to being disclosed. Other risks are that, uh, and this is sort of more global and very general risk, is the concern um, that U.S. law enforcement power could break principles of territoriality, uh, overreaching the um, U.S. law enforcement's right and ability to access information that could and should be governed by local law. Um, it's important that any company hiring a U.S. provider that may store data overseas to understand the procedural requirements of the Cloud Act, the timing for attempting to oppose or quash a subpoena and other procedures and requirements. 
it's also important to understand at some point in the future whether there are executive agreements in place between the United States and that country. To date, there are no such executive agreements because the law is quite fresh, but there will be. It's anticipated that the United States will enter into an executive agreement with Great Britain initially.